Yo, what's up? Homeless Pimp here, photographer and filmmaker from New York City. Today I wanted to show you one of my comedy documentaries. I shot a comedy documentary about an open micer. Uh, I, once I asked him if I could film him, he decided to book an 800 seat venue in Boca Raton, Florida. And, you know, it's tough being an open micer. I went into this wanting to document how crazy you have to be to pursue comedy and how being an open micer is literally like a blood sport. It's like being a gladiator. It's, you know, if, if you've never been to an open mic, go to in your city and check out an open mic. It is a weird scene to decide to spend 10 years in. Um, I was inspired by Colin Quinn, who always talks about the mental health of open mic comedians and how tough it is to be in an open mic comedian world and break through to the mainstream comedy world. Um, so I wanted to check it out for myself. And this is like eight years old now, but here is an open mic comedian booking an 800 seat venue in Boca Raton, Florida. Shout out Brad Stoll. Shout out Santi. Shout out John. Go check out your local open mic. It's a weird world. Am I like a little weird for you right now? You guys are like, how does this 24 year old already look like a stepdad? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been doing comedy short of two years. It's not a lot of time. It's not at all. And um, two years in, I think I'm doing pretty okay. New York City is filled with so much bullshit. Comedy has taught me with confidence comes your actual creative process and you can back your ideas. I was in a fraternity because I paid for my friends and uh... <laughs> when you're in a fraternity, I, I, I kind of found out the hard way that you're not supposed to say friend. That's not the right thing to say. And one day a guy came up to me and goes, hey Brad, pledge, or whatever they call this. <laughs> it's not called a frat. You wouldn't call your country a cunt. <laughs> Which is fucked up, right? Because I'd obviously call it a count because that's how words work. <laughs> you stick to Bud Light, I'll stick to spelling. How does that sound? <laughs> your parents clearly paid for your education. My name is John Newman. and I've been doing comedy for two and a half years. I started comedy March of 2014. Uh, I had two good friends of mine who were funny, and I, we hung out, and they said, hey, I just, we just went to an open mic, and that blew my mind. I had no idea you could even do that. So I was like, I'm going to that with you next time. And so I did, uh, and then it just kind of took off from there, and I just really enjoyed it. I'd always been interested in comedy, but I don't, something had never clicked in my mind of, oh, this is something you can actually do. So I just started going to open mics, and it just, I just loved it. <laughs> Do you have those people in your life, though, that will tell you that they can smoke weed and they just go about their day just fine? Yeah, those are people with low potential to begin with. <laughs> and I have a friend who's like, yeah, man, it's not a big deal. I can just smoke weed and then go about my day. I'm like, yeah, no one expected anything from you. <laughs> go back to your shift at David Buster's. Brad called me and said, hey, I'm gonna rent a theater with 800 people. Uh, would you open for me and do 20 minutes? I'll pay for you. And I said, yes, I would definitely do that. Uh, and yes, he's gonna, he's gonna do like 30, 40 minutes to 800 people, ideally, if they fill the thing. Uh, it'll be the most time and the biggest crowd I've ever done, which I'm excited about. Uh, it'll be in Boca Raton, Florida, so it'll be the exact demographic of people that I know nothing about. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Just short of three months away. We got the approval. Yay. Uh, it's official. We're, we're going to Florida on the 22nd. Court a half hour. This is probably the ballsiest, dumbest thing that I've ever done in my life. It's a constant basis of saying you're not good enough, but no one's physically, has the balls, the gall to tell you no. They have to beat around the bush. They got sugar coated for you. That's why I built this idea of like, let's fucking take a risk. Let's take an 850 seat theater and let's fill it. And we're not even gonna be in the same state for the months leading up to it. I think that's 
something that everyone should be doing. <laughs> hope you guys great. Hope you had fun. We have our closer, the headliner. He's actually going to be taping. He's a uh, half hour special in Florida. He's my best friend. My mom thinks we're dating. Uh, <laughs> Guys, give, uh, get your hands together. Give all the love to my man, my brother from another mother, Brad Stoll, everybody. Hey guys, keep it going for Santi. So Brad, Brad's, um, he's been working really hard. Um, and he's like, oh, I don't know. Like he gets really worked up about things uh, very rapidly. Like he's a, it's very, emo like I'm emotional. Like he's like so, like, we're probably on, on the same level of being emotional, but like, he's so sensitive sometimes. So, I think he's doing okay, I think he's doing fine, uh, but he definitely has that like one off, like once a week or once every four day, uh, days um, breakdown, uh, which is, it's, it's, it's fine, and like I got his back, you know, like it's good to have a friend that's always being like, you know, like, I'm always a guy who's, I, I've seen his growth. Like I know he's like a funny guy, um, he's just got to believe it. He's just got to, he's got to like, go out there and like just you know do his thing and not be in his head. Whenever Brad gets it, you know right away when he gets in his head. He's just completely um, not thinking what he's saying and and it turns into a mess. As much as sometimes you don't want to do the same stuff over and over again, this is what he's got to do. He's got to do the exact same joke uh, with the exact same timing at different venues, at different places. He's just gotta go and like, that bar show, that club that you think that is amazing. Like that stupid open mic at that blah, 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 blah. Like he's gotta do the exact same material over and over again until he gets sick of it. Because once it becomes reflexes, then you'll be able to have fun with it. I won't forget this though, this girl Jillian, God bless her, she comes up to me, she's like, oh my God, Brad. The funniest thing happened to me in Central Park yesterday. I said, listen, Jillian, I'm eating Caesar salad, let's make this quick. She's like, okay, okay, okay. So me and my friend Stephanie were walking around Central Park, and we were so hungry for ice cream. And then Stephanie... <laughs> <laughs> she stepped in ice cream. <laughs> I'm like, Jillian, that is hilarious, but it's not as good as your miscarriage story, you know? It's just... <laughs> you didn't let me finish. Uh, I was saying that she miscarried a bunch of files and then she tripped over a chair. Yeah, yeah, and then she fell on her pregnant stomach. Uh... I've slept like shit for the last four days. God, the garbage. And then when after I announced it, only one ticket was bought. So uh, we're going to order more flyers. The posters just got into Florida. My mom just hit me up today. Um, I'm scared. Because the hardest part as a comic is that people stop fucking answering you after a while. Like, yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there. They're not going to come. They never come. And they can only come when big things happen. Which is why I'm hoping people come to this thing. I see her great aunt spit into her mother's mouth. <laughs> and no one says a damn thing. <laughs> And then it hit me. Oh, so that's where you get it from. <laughs> yeah, fuck that joke. Jesus Christ. Silence is a big part of it. You have to be, have to deal with people not liking you. And everyone who goes on stage, I think the rationale is that you are funny because you clearly got into this for a reason. But do you have, you have the, I guess the. Um, the will to be told that you're not funny leading up to the time that you finally get that laugh. The person that actually tell you, you are good enough. And I want their approval. That's fucking crazy. I would rather open up to a bunch of strangers than I would to people who I meet a couple times. Omni's a drug. It sure as hell makes you forget about a lot of shit. It's really surreal that I'm here. We have 180 tickets sold, which is nuts. Um, I don't think I've ever performed with that many people, if that many people show up. And a lot of people send me last second messages saying I can't make it. Sorry, bro. Totally forgot I have this thing. My grandma has to jerk me off or something. I don't know. It's stupid. People are people. Bullshit is bullshit. Everyone always has an excuse and you know, you're always easily disappointed when you're planning something because 
Not everyone's thinking about you, you know? That's the selfish part of it. You gotta, like, get past as a comedian. Oh, they're the curtains. Good luck getting through a high school curtain. Just open the Watch out, John. Treat that curtain like the first girl you ever fingered. See, I don't know if John hates yep. me or he's just tired. He's tired. <laughs> I'd say both, actually. He like hates me. So we got off the plane and we went to the mall for, I think, 11 hours. I don't know why we did that. <laughs> um, and then we came here and I took a nap and then I went for a swim and I feel great. I feel much better than I did. Sorry. <laughs> no, what's insane that it went to Friday's paper in the weekend section. That's insane. I know. We haven't sold it to mom. We've only sold like five tickets today. That's okay. Because people like people don't care about the extra five dollars. Friends made a joke when we were doing Fiddler. He's like, I, I signed a, I signed a receipt at like a like a supermarket. He's like, oh, dude, you're Hollywood, man. You just signed autographs. <laughs> uphill but there is an uphill and I will be down that red carpet with you one day because now I don't care what woman you have I'm <laughs> <forced. laughs> you just remind me of that That's so oh four five oh my god this is intense I love Boca Raton <laughs> everything about it is amazing uh, this is the worst promo ever. We saw Brad's childhood home, and the driveway looked like a glass surface that you could snort cocaine off of. <laughs> okay. And the house looked like uh, if Scarface had kept living. This is where he would want to settle yeah, down Brad, with his children. He didn't tell us, but Brad, is, uh, he, he, was, he, he has a lot of white privilege. <laughs> That's not what I was saying. That's sure. not what he's saying at all. <laughs> cocaine fucking... You know, white privilege, that cocaine type of thing. <laughs> yeah, that cocaine type of white privilege. No, that's not Everyone, no. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned about what kind of people are showing up to the show tomorrow. <sighs> if we're gonna be able to fucking understand the jokes. You know? We'll be fine. It feels weird. This morning I woke up. I woke up at like 8. Uh, wasn't hungover. I think I just it was like, you know, anxious and excited for this for today. A lot of friends, excited. Tickets are being purchased. Right now we're at, I think, 193, which is awesome. It's amazing. I couldn't, I, if you asked me like a month ago that we're going to even have that many people, probably wouldn't believe you. Um, went over to the school, showed the boys around there. That was fun. I think if I went back, would I have gone to high school here? If I could go, can I come back with like a Back to the Future almanac? Then I would go to this high school because I would have millions of dollars. And then I would stop going to this high school. So this high school would just be a vehicle to have the almanac from Back to the Future. Like my best here. Of course, you're like losing your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, were you using some phrase that you actually mean? I think that uh, it seems like a nice high school. Um, probably a lot of popularity contest, you know, who's the most popular, so definitely do it, because I think I'd be pretty good at being popular here. Here we are, back at my high school. I've come to explore my demons. I don't know why we're here, this is weird. Probably not much for them, but more for me. It was very nostalgic, kind of taking in the theater again. I walked in, I opened the door. And like that same smell hit me, the same smell that I, like I remember that the theater smelled like before. That's such a weird thing. I've, I've been very relaxed since I've been back here in Florida. I think New York has definitely stressed me out a lot. Uh, the show itself has stressed me out, but like now that I'm here, I think I've come more to acceptance of what this is going to be. And however I do, I'm just excited that I got to do this and was able to pull it off.
pulled in to the parking lot. And Brett said, you know what, let's go across the street and grab coffee as we were parking. And now we are 15 minutes away at a Starbucks. Because we had to drive out of the way for this. And then we're going to go back. I'm not going to put my headphones on for two or three hours. And then I'm going to tell jokes to strangers. And that will be fun. I'll enjoy that quite a bit. Yeah. That's the first girl that Brad's talked to of the whole weekend. I, I never said the word fun fact. You said it. This place is uh, it's incredible. Um, it's huge. It's incredible. It's uh, one of the best places on whatever. Who's that? This is crazy, you know, you put on your own fucking show, and you know, people show up. What do you think of the trip? Uh, the, the trip is awesome. Uh, you know, we got to the airport way too early, like, I don't know why you had to be at the airport three hours before the flight. You know, you, you can already say this behind my back, you don't have to say it in front of my face, too. Uh, okay, uh, I'll say both of <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I used to get really in my head, now I'm just like, dude, this is a payoff. We worked so hard, you know, we got people to show up, blew all the way from New York. It's, it, we've done so much for this, so it's, it's good to be here. Featured on MTV, and he's the co-host of the Brunch Buddies podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Santi Espinosa! But, you know, she called me out the other day, she's like, Hey Santi, how you doing? Como, es, como estas? Como se va? How's New York? And I'm like, New York is fantastic, Mom, how are you? And she was like, are you gay? I said, Mom, did you just ask if I was gay? And she was just trying to be casual, just trying to be your friend. I said, that's not what friends do, Mom. We don't ask each other if we're gay. And she was like, well, let me ask you something. How do you know you're not gay? I had no idea how to retaliate, guys. <laughs> And uh, he's hilarious. Uh, he's one of my favorite comics in New York City. Guys, give it up for my friend, John Newman, everybody. I never understood that. People go to Amsterdam to smoke weed, which is just such a long distance to travel for something they'll deliver to your door. <laughs> you don't go somewhere they deliver. Have you ever seen anyone in the sit-down portion of a Domino's? Of course not. <laughs> that area is reserved for heroin addicts. <laughs> Where did you get the money for that beer? Did you sell a limerick to a blacksmith? <laughs> What's going on here? I'm a uh, you know when he's like in the zone, like he's stress-free, and I don't think that he's stress-free right now. I think he's just getting excited for the show. Uh, he'll be stress-free like after the first five minutes of the set. I don't use the dating apps anymore. There's like the, the Tinder, even though I swiped through all of you before I got here. Uh, I don't use the dating apps anymore because, um, you know, you, get, you meet a lot of weird people. And uh, the one time I got lucky, this girl invited me up to her place and she said to me, I just want to let you know, we're not having sex. I'm like, way to ruin act two, Chelsea. The play was going pretty well and then you ruined it. <laughs> and as if matters couldn't get weirder, she looks me dead in the eyes, and she's like, how do you want your hand job? I'm like, I don't know, alone? Is that a possibility? <laughs> you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. It's been almost three months since Boca. I got less hair back in New York. Uh, it's been a hard adjustment to come back to all of this. The grind is not, it's not as easy to go back to something when you do like, when you're, in your eyes is like the biggest you've done. It like has this expectation of like, oh, it's never gonna be as good as 265 people. You know, you get deflated when you come back to New York, you're like, oh, it's all shitty open mics and the occasional spot at the club. Uh, hmm. 
Some of you can't tell by looking at me. You guys are like, how does this 24-year-old already look like a stepdad? That's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. I am old looking. This is my look. I didn't pick it. Okay. All right. I took a risk and it worked out in my favor. You know, sometimes it does. And that's the beautiful thing about it is that so much anxiety and stress and build up. You're like, here's that big moment and the curtains open and they're ready to see you. It's only the beginning of what can be something amazing. And I, I truly believe that I'm on this earth for comedy or entertainment as a whole. I want to do this for the rest of my life and never stop. Thank mm -hmm. you.